Okay, so description lists in HTML text fundamentals. We walked through how to mark up basic lists in HTML, but we didn't mention the third type of list you'll occasionally come across, and that's description lists. The purpose of these lists is to mark up a set of items and their associated descriptions, such as terms and definitions or questions and answers. Let's look at an example of a set of terms and definitions. So, solilo soliloquy in drama where a character speaks to themselves, representing their inner thoughts, blah, blah, blah. Monologue. Um, an example. <laughs> description lists use a different wrapper than the other type of, than the other list type, so DL. In addition, each term is wrapped in a, D, D, in a DT, so description term, and each description is wrapped in a DD, description definition element. Let's finish marking up our example. So the whole thing is in a DL, and then the term is in a DT, and the definition is in a DD. The browser's default style will display description list with the description intended indented somewhat from forms from the terms mdn style follow this convention fairly closely but also embold the terms for extra definition okay so you can't have just li tags for this because there's two two different types of text in this mm -hmm. okay so it's dt and dd but also embolden. Okay. Note it is permitted to have a single term with multiple descriptions. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's like basically sub lists. Yeah, basically. Okay. Active learning, marking up a set of definitions. It is time to try your hand at description lists. Add elements to the raw text in the input field so that it appears as a description list in the output field. <clears throat> you can try using your own terms and descriptions if you like. All right. So basically, this entire thing is in a description list or DL. Um, and then so this thing is going to be in a description term. And then this thing is going to be in a description definition. Okay. Sweet. All right. Quotations. HTML also has features available for marking up quotations. Which element you use depends on whether you are marking up a block or inline quotation. Block quotes. 
a section of block level content, be it a paragraph, multiple paragraphs, a list, etc., is quoted from somewhere else, you sh should wrap it inside a block quote element to signify this and include a URL pointing to the source of the quote inside a site attribute. For example, the following markup is taken from the MDN block quote element page. Okay. So the strong HTML code code less than block code. What are the code tags for? Let me look it up. Oh, I think it's to signify that this is like code in HTML. Or like may turn it into a like did you see this part here? Yeah. It like makes it look like this, maybe? Oh yeah, I see the the black or the darkened background. Yeah, I think that's where it goes. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. This, Cause this gives it the less than, this gives it the greater than. And then this is just a regular word. So I guess that's the only thing it is. Okay. Element strong or em. Indicates that the enclosed text is an extended quotation. To turn this into a block quote, you just do this block, block quote. quote site. I'm not understanding. Yeah, I don't know what this means. <laughs> okay, so block quote site. So it HTML has features available for marking up quotations. Which elements you use depending on whether you're marking up block or inline quotation. So if a section of block level content paragraph is quoted from somewhere else, so I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my own page. Okay. See what I, because this is pretty confusing. So this whole thing is being copied. Drop oh, it. Yeah, it is indented. Let's see what I. Where's the? I don't see the link. Like it's supposed to have a site tag. Oh no, the site is an attribute of the block quote. Yeah. Do I need text? I'm gonna look up block quotes because this is kind of confusing. Block quote tag specifies a section that is quoted from another source. Browsers usually indent block quote elements. Mm, okay. Site uh, attribute specifies the source of the quotation. Hmm. It just indents it. Yeah. But I'm wondering, you know how you put a site, a link into it? Where does the link go? Like how is someone supposed to see the link?
Maybe this is just for the coder. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe they, or maybe it's like for the search engines. They can like relate the website you've got. Oh, uh, yeah, that might be it as well. Because you're right, you can't really see the web page anywhere. Yeah, so. Oh, interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you Google what does a block code do? I, I'm Googling what is a site attribute for. Site attribute is used to identify the online source of the quotation in the form of URL. The value of the site attribute isn't rendered on the screen. Although this is potential uh, useful metadata could be extracted and written back into the web page through the magic of DOM scripting. As such, browser support for this attribute is marked as none, but because it has other potential uses, and there's a likelihood of improved native support being blah, 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 blah. So currently, no one uses it, but in future, maybe used in user agent or, or my search engine, so better to use it. Yeah, this guy worded it weird. Yeah, I think it's just search engines that use it. So it's good to have that for search engine optimization. Okay. Uh, where were we? Inline quotations. Mm -hmm. Inline quotations work in exactly the same way, except for that they use the Q element. For example, the below bit of markup contains a quotation from the MDN Q page. They have a Q, and there's also a site attribute. Browser default styling would render this as normal text put in quotes to indicate a quotation, like so. Quote element Q is intended for short quotations that don't require paragraph breaks. Okay. Uh, citations. The content of site attribute sounds useful, but unfortunately, browsers, screen readers, etc., don't really do much with it. There is no way to get the browser to display the contents of site without writing your own solution using JavaScript or CSS. If you want to make the source of the quotation available on the page, a better way to mark it up is to put the site element next to or inside the quote element. This is really meant to contain the name of the quote source, an example, the name of the book, or the name of the person that said the quote, but there's no reason why you couldn't link the text inside site to quote the source in some way. There's a bunch of examples. Citations are styled in italic font by default. You can see this code work in our quotations.html sample. Okay, I'm going to copy this. See what it does. Yeah, okay. So it's really only useful for you. Search, uh, search engines. Hmm. It is intended for short quotes, but do not require paragraph breaks. Okay. Cool. Active learning. Who said that? Time for another active learning example. In this example, we'd like you to turn the middle paragraph into a block quote, which includes a site attribute. Turn part of the third paragraph into an inline quote, which includes a site attribute. Include a site element for each link. The citation sources you need are uh, blah, 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 blah. If you make a mistake, you can always reset it using the reset button. If you get really stuck, press the show solution button to see the answer. Okay. 
Um, so turn the middle paragraph into a block quote, which includes a site attribute. Middle paragraph. Middle one is the first link. So, so let's take a look at this little block quote. Middle site. Part of the third paragraph into nine quote, which includes a site attribute. a site element for each link. Okay, I'll turn that into an anchor. So the concept of positive thinking and the Q site. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what it meant by a site element for each link because it wasn't actually any links besides the sites. So I just turned the uh, affirmations for positive thinking into an anchor and put a site tag inside of that. Uh, I guess that works. Uh, I was thinking maybe we put the quotes as the anchor. So maybe something like equals
with this editor, it's so hard to read the t the code. Like holy yeah. shit. So this is the block quotes. So the whole thing is in the block quote. And then maybe something like I don't know, something like that. Oh, true. Oh, I see. Okay. So they do want the link on that. So you do on the Confucius, on the Confucius. Okay, that's how it was. Okay, I guess that makes sense. You're linking to the... Uh, People. Okay. For the reference, I think I just want to do this. I'm gonna do this in Visual Code because this is just a mess. Oh. What do we got? Superscript, subscript. Same. It's a solution. Alrighty. God, I hate their editor. <laughs> oh, yo, but it's actually a little bit more convenient than like for the smaller ones. Yeah, it is. True. For the smaller ones, it's like easier than copying and pasting a visual code. But for yeah, this type of stuff, yeah, no, definitely not. Because it doesn't like format anything. Uh, okay, well. Moving on. Um, wait, how many sections do we have left? We're on abbreviations. So we got marking up contact details, superscript, representing computer code, date and time, and that's it. So we'll probably finish this one in one more chapter before the end of the day, I guess. Mm -hmm. Where are we at right now? advanced text, documents, and web structure. We only have two more, actually. And then the last two are assignments, or assessments. Oh, I didn't actually read those, okay. So we'll probably be able to get done on Sunday, 
I think that's the next meeting or Monday, or whatever. I don't know. Oh yeah, today's Friday. True. Yeah, got got a break finally. It's mm-hmm. Saturday. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's get as much done as we can. Then. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So abbreviations is another fairly common element you'll meet when looking around the web. A B B R. This is used to wrap around abbreviations or acronyms and provide full expansion of the term included inside the title attribute. Let's look at a couple of examples. So we use a BBR title hypertext markup language, HTML, a BBR to structure our web document. I think a so title reverend green i think reverend green did it in the kitchen with the chainsaw these will come out looking something like this the expansion will appear in a tooltip when it's hovered over oh i see okay true there's another element acronym which basically does the same thing and was intended specifically for acronyms rather than abbreviations This, however, has fallen into disuse. It wasn't supported in browsers as well as ABBR and has such a similar function that it was considered pointless to have both. True. Okay. For this example, uh, for this simple active learning assignment, we would like you to simply mark up an abbreviation. You can use our samples below or replace it with your own. Yeah, for like these tiny ones, it's pretty useful. So for this, it would be A, so A, B, B, R, title, equal, quotes. Uh, What does NASA stand for? National? The National Aeronautics and Space Administration. A E R O. Totally didn't have to look that up. C I. Aeronautics. Aeronautics and Space Administration. Mm-hmm. Close this and A B B R. close that that space here this one doesn't seem to have an underline as the other ones it has a like dot 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 thing oh mine doesn't that's weird maybe it's a bug Hmm. maybe Show solution. Solution is the same. Okay, sweet. Okay, you good? Yep. Uh, marking up contact details. So HTML. I misspelled the first tag. My bad. Okay, continue. Oh, okay. Uh, marking up contact details. So HTML has an element for marking up contact details called addresses or address. This simply wraps around your contact detail. For example, address Chris Mills, Manchester, the Grim North, UK address. One thing to remember, however, is that the address element is meant for marking up the contact details of a person who wrote the HTML document, not any address. So the above would only be okay if Chris had written the document the markup appears on. Note, something like this would also be okay. Page written by A. Href, authors, Chris Mills. So what this is doing is this is linking this Chris Mills word to the author's Chris Mills. So what does this do actually? What what happens? What is this? (laughs) You could just use an anchor tag for that. I'm not sure what the address tag for. 
<clears throat> well then, let's find out. Save. Let's see what this page has to say about it. Oh, it just gives you like a cool looking uh, thing. It like italicizes it and. Oh, it, why, why not just italicize it? Style, style uh, classes or whatever. Oh, who knows? Maybe it does other stuff too. Or maybe it's also for the search engines. I don't know. At this point, I'm just going to assume everything's for the search engines. Oh, the text and address element usually renders in italic. Most browsers will add a line break before and after the address element. Where, where does it say that? Oh, I'm just reading off uh, w3schools.com. Oh, okay. okay, I'll read the next stuff, I guess. Um, superscript and subscript. We will occasionally need to use superscript and subscript when marking up items like dates, chemical formulae, and mathematical equations so they have the correct meaning. The soup, uh, soup and sub elements handle this job. For example, um, okay, so they use the superscript for the th. Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Representing computer code. There are a number of elements available for marking up computer code using HTML. Code tag for marking up generic pieces of computer code. The pre tag for retaining white space. Generally, code blocks if you use indentation or excess white space inside your text. Browsers will ignore it and you will not see it on your rendered page. If you wrap the text in pre tags, however, your white space will be rendered identically to how, how you see it in your text editor. Uh, the bar for specifically marking up variable names. K keyboard for marking up keyboard input entered into the uh, uh, computer. Uh, S amp for marking up the output of a computer program. Um, look at a few examples. You should try to having a play with these. Try grabbing a computer copy of our other schematics at HTML sample file. Okay, I'll do that. Working with generic pieces of computer code, retaining white spaces. Hmm. I see, okay. Sounds about right. This is going to be called Thank you. 
So for the last hour, do you want to go as far as we can with the HTML stuff, or do you want to do uh, like projects, like he told us yesterday? Because we got one hour left. Oh yeah. Because uh, I think we've been doing a decent amount of projects anyway for this. So. I mean, if it's the same ones as yesterday, I'm honestly, I'd rather just do this HTML. I feel like we're learning yeah. more than. Yeah, me too. Copy. Hey, do you remember how to pull something from from uh, Git? Um. It's just get pull, isn't it? And then the link. That's what I thought too, but it's not working for it. So bash here. Get pull. Get pull. Get pull space origin space branch name. Uh, space origin. And then master again. Oh, you want to add the remote repository? Is that what you want to do? Like, like you know how we have this? You want to clone all that yeah. into yours? Oh, it's git clone, not git. Yeah, clone. yeah, that's what you want to do. Git. Just, yeah, git clone space the link. Paste. What the fuck? Try recopying it. <laughs> Get a copy path. And then get clone and paste. I don't think it's copying, right? Um, okay. Issues too. What are these issues? Okay, never mind. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna copy it. Forget this. Touch. What is this called? Other. HTML. And then I will put. all of this in here. But you'd have to clone the like the master batch. So you'd have to go all the way back. Oh, I'd have to, to clone everything? Back. Not just you have to clone everything, I think. Because the button disappears once you go to a certain area. Uh, so. Um, open folder. What was it called again? Oh, I can't even find any. Can't do that. Hmm. And then let's open up the file. All right, you got it. Okay. Address. Birthday, okay. Caffeine, okay. Subscript, superscript, subscript. This is for code, and it's using the pre. 
intro. And then you should use presentations. This is the code option. Mm, JavaScript variable. And this is the keyboard. And then this is the sample. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Marking up times and dates. Um, HTML also provides the time element for marking up times and dates in machine readable format. For example, uh, use a time tag, date time. Okay, why is this useful? Well, there are different ways that humans write down dates. The above date could be written as a bunch of different ones. These different forms cannot be easily recognized by computers. What if you wanted to automatically grab the dates of all events in a page and then insert them into a column? The time element allows you to attach unambiguous machine readable time date for this purpose. The basic example above just provides a simple machine readable date, but there are many other options that are possible. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it just converts it into one format or one readable format. Uh, summary. That marks the end of our study of HTML text semantics. Bear in mind that what you have seen during this course is not an exhaustive list of HTML text elements. We wanted to try and cover the essentials, some of the more common ones you see in the wild, at least might find interesting. To find way more HTML elements, you can look at, a, at our HTML element reference. The inline schema, uh, semantics section would be a great place to start. The next article, we will look at HTML elements you'd use to structure the different parts of an HTML document. All right. Okay.